So Sarah, so tell me, what do you do? Uh, I am a showrunner. Mm -hmm. I have a television show called The Affair on Showtime. Right. We're going into our fourth season. Nice. And you? Well, I started off in actually in film. And that was actually, I that. yeah, I just happened to actually stumble into gaming. The gaming industry continually kind of is, is, is the little brother of the film industry. Right, right, right. And so it takes their leads in terms of, like, especially Hollywood, like big, you know, fantastic, like over the top kind of experiences. Yeah. And because it makes so much money, I think there's this idea that the medium is actually super evolved. Mm. But as the craft of storytelling, mm -hmm. it's very much in its infancy. Uh -huh. When I started writing television, I started writing theater, and television was kind of frowned on, like television was slumming it. <laughs> uh, it really wasn't that cool to be in television, and now, 10 years later, it's like everybody wants to be in television. The movie stars want to be in television, the filmmakers want to be in television, like the writers obviously want to be in television. But I think there is an awareness at this moment that it's not going to last forever, and that perhaps we're hitting, you know, there's, there's all this, this quote unquote peak TV that's mm -hmm. happening right mm -hmm. now, and I mean, peak implies that there's going to be the other side of the mountain. So I think things like VR and AR and other kind of stuff that's coming maybe more from gaming or, or maybe just from different mediums in general, everybody's kind of looking at it, trying to think like, okay, so what's the, like, what's the next thing? And that's my question, you know, it's like, are people going to want to start to consume entertainment in an active way? Like, mm -hmm. are they going to want to start participating in it if it means that they have to like get up off their couch, they go somewhere? I think make decisions. It, it's, 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 I think it, it, it's yet to be answered, yeah. quite honestly. And um, I always kind of thought, I'm like, I don't know why they, why in, in VR uh, developers and so forth feel that we also need to be the writers as well as the directors. Right, because right. I'm like, well, that like film in television, you've, you've got writers yeah. and then you've got directors. So it's interesting. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping mm -hmm. that there's going to be more people reaching yeah. out to that and understanding that look, the writer might not know the medium, right. but writers know. Storytelling. Yeah. So is there, is there something in terms of like the VR medium that you, th is there a kind of story that you think VR tells better than TV at this point? I think there's something just naturally like about the hardware itself when mm -hmm. you put it on that isolates you and, and, and makes you somewhat of a voyeur. Yeah. And I think having choice yeah. in where you look is really what, what people should be kind of considering right now. Yeah. I think if you provide uh, a game mechanic um, it could actually pull away from the story. It might try to make the story conform and try to fit into like these are the rules of how to yeah, engage, yeah. and that's the last thing you want to do. You don't you don't want to you don't want to give anybody instructions. You yeah. want to give anybody like this is what you need to do. Right. So I think that's kind of the key. I think when the affair works best, it's like a conversation between his character, her character, and the individual audience member. Absolutely. And so like everybody, you know, sort of the, the like platonic affair is that everybody is watching a different show. Uh, because, because the voyeur is always somewhat different and has like a somewhat different sort of alliance. Absolutely. And so that was something that I was like, oh yeah, you could totally do that in VR. Like you could totally have the sense that like every individual VR voyeur is having a different experience in the world because they're sort of bringing their own like desire and expectations. And and at least right now, that's what really resonates with mm -hmm. me is losing myself, having this anonymity, being maybe a fly on the wall or a guest at a dinner party mm -hmm. and having all of this kind of take place. And this is what I think kind of comes a little bit from gaming, which might be different from, uh, uh, from television and film is that Maybe by me looking over to the right mm -hmm. and not looking over here, I get something that if you were looking over there, you might not get. Right. So that water cooler conversation, which is so key in terms of pop culture and how yeah. we talk about shows, yeah. brings in an element of what games are, are notorious for, which is replayability. Yeah. Mm -hmm.